I'm Bridget Bardot, for all you know, your girl behind the counter, and during this month on my Instagram, uh, from the period of September 15th to October 15th, I have been doing Latino horror movies for uh, Latino History Month, Hispanic History Month, slash um, Hispanic Heritage Month. I've also heard it called uh, Latino Heritage Month. Um, whatever you choose to call that period, I've been trying to cover it on my Instagram. So. I just made this video to highlight a couple of the really excellent films I found during this time. So, without further ado. So, let's start our journey in Argentina with Penumbra by Ramiro García Bogliano y Adrián García Bogliano. So, this movie is about a very racist Spanish lady who is desperately looking for somebody to take her apartment in Argentina. She sucks already and you get to be stuck with her for this whole movie. Uh, and it's a joy. I swear to you guys, it's a joy. Um, and it's a good thing that she is selling her apartment at this time because, oh my god, look at these mysterious real estate agents that want to buy this apartment during this eclipse. How, how convenient! How very convenient for her. Oh, this, this goes so well for her. Um, so I would argue that this is not just a straight up horror movie. It is a social thriller talking specifically about colonialism, uh, Latin America's relationship with Spain and racism, good old fashioned racism. Um, and keep in mind that I'm saying this from a distinctly uh, like Latino from America point of view and I'm also not Argentinian so take everything that I have to say with a little grain of salt and if you have any Argentinian friends that can offer a better explanation than this and like know a lot more about this please take their opinion higher than mine because like I can only kind of guess at this I'm not necessarily a part of the Argentinian culture um but I happen to think it's a social thriller talking about all these things. Um, and I think this is that this movie is so potent due to how honestly hateful the lead actress is. Man, that woman is so hateful and she does it so well. And the reason why I bring up how hateful she is and why that's great is because sometimes people try to create these like vanity performances where, you know, you're like, oh, I'm trying to put a little bit of humanity. No, this woman doesn't care. <laughs> She's just like, this woman is hateful, um, and there is very little redeeming qualities about her. Um, and that being said, she's still very interesting to watch, despite being imminently punchable. Uh, so props to that actress, and I'm sure that actress is not like her character in real life. Uh, so props to that actress for good acting. Um, and I would also say the minor characters are fairly well realized. Um, the members of the mysterious organization that are hanging out at the apartment, the homeless person that our, that our wonderful lead character attacks um, is also very well realized and also the neighbor as well. All of them are memorable, but they don't overstay their welcome. And also, Penumbra takes incredible advantage of the setting. It can get really boring watching people just talk in a room. Just like talk in an apartment. Like, it can get so boring so quickly. But this film does tension really well because it relies on that single setting and specifically not being able to get out of the single setting in order to just kind of like play around with the tension of the film and really up those stakes. So if you are looking for an awesome social thriller with a lot of tension and a main character who is freaking hateable, she, this, this actress does a good job because good lord, I have never wanted to deck a woman so hard in my life. Um, check out Penumbra. <laughs> so, we're gonna bring it to Brazil with Jose Marica Marins and Coffin Joe. So, who is Coffin Joe? Coffin Joe is your average undertaker who's 
likes include spiders and trying to spite God and really, 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 really wanting a son. He'll let you know that on a first date, by the way. He will definitely let you know that he wants a baby. Um, to go and spread his genes. Um, so originally the Coffin Joe trilogy started out with At Midnight I Will Take Your Soul, followed by This Night I Will Possess Your Corpse, and then Embodiment of Evil. So who is Coffin Joe beside, besides what I just said earlier? So Coffin Joe is the alter ego of Jose Marie Camarins, the director of the Coffin Joe series, who created Brazil's first horror movie and first horror character. So he's kind of like the Freddy Krueger of Brazil mixed with John Waters, mixed with a little, little tiny, tiny, tiny hint of Elvira, uh, because he also used to go and host a late night Brazilian horror movie show. So yeah, if, if you wanted all three of that in a blender, uh, that's him. Oh. Uh, sorry, you also have to add a little bit of like a long acrylic nails, a top hat, and a unibrow. And then you get Jose Marie Camarins slash Coffin Joe. Um, but I really love the Coffin Joe series of films because they are super fun. They are such great visual films. They have such an amazing manic energy, which is completely carried by that director who is fantastic. Um, and finally, just because, so horror and exploitation have been kind of combined for like a number of years, you know, they sort of cross over a lot, but I feel like this set of movies really shows the best of exploitation filmmaking. It just shows this energy and this absolute wonderful mania and it's really creative and you guys should all check out Coffin Joe. Um, but if you are going to check it out, I would start out with the two movies that I mentioned. And there are some movies in the middle that are, like, not part of that series, but they're, like, Coffin Joe adjacent. And they deal with Coffin Joe as more of a concept. If you guys ever want me to do a weird video on, like, you know viewing the Coffin Joe filmography and like where to start in the Coffin Joe extended universe. I, I shit you not, it's an extended universe, by the way. Um, I would be happy to do so. Um, and if you have any, and if any Brazilians want to collaborate on this, please let me know because I would love to do a Coffin Joe extended universe analysis. Anyways, check out Coffin Joe. So let's go to Mexico with Satanico Pandemonium uh, by Gilberto Martinez Solano. Uh, what is this movie about? Um, it's about sexy Satan tempting a nun, as you do. Um, so I'm surprised it took us this long to hit the exploitation genre. Um, <laughs> good for me. Um, I also learned the term exploitation from one of my mexploitation from one of my subscribers who is the real Aaron Soto. So thank you so much for opening my mind with that. And I just have to say that this is honestly one of the prettiest exploitation films I have ever seen. They really use their setting nicely. They usually they use some great natural settings, including a beautiful one with like a waterfall and like a lake. It's freaking gorgeous. It's so pretty. This movie's so pretty. I had to make, well, I didn't have to make, but I made stills for this movie. Like I hand chose stills from Instagram. I mean, sorry, from the film. And then I color corrected and added it onto Instagram. And it was such a joy. Like everything's a great screensaver. Um, also, I wish that the version online had great color correction because it doesn't. Um, and I wish they had that. So if you are going to watch this movie, uh, please watch it on a DVD with like good color correction. Um, and also, 
I bet Quentin Tarantino wishes that there was a great restoration of this film too, and you'll get to the 30 minute mark and you'll see exactly what I mean. E exactly what I mean. There's a reason why he likes this film. Um, but other than the beautiful visuals, uh, Quentin Tarantino's fascination with it to the point where he definitely named a character after her, um, this is a film that just it doesn't let up it's really fun and it has a lot to say about the nature of sin and catholicism so if you're interested in a fun film with a message check out satanico pandemonium who's not just a character from till from dust till dawn anyways <laughs> so we're going to be checking ourselves into la residencia or the house that screamed by Chico Ibanez Serrador, who wound up going and filming the movie from Spain, but he's a director from Uruguay, so we're gonna take it today. We're gonna take it and we're gonna run with it. Um, so this has all of the great staples of a fantastic gothic horror. Do we have a boarding school full of rich aristocratic girls who are up to no good? Check! Number two, do we have a bunch of ladies with a bunch of weird repressed sexual urges who can't express them anywhere? A uh, double check. Uh, do we have a crazy headmistress who has a weird obsession with all of these women and keeping them incredibly pure? Triple check. And finally, do we have lots of poofy dresses? We've got lots of poofy dresses here. A uh, quadruple check, A+. plus. Um, so the plot of this movie is the headmistress of a boarding school, played by Lily Palmer. Uh, this boarding school's got a bad case of the murders. Uh, ladies keep disappearing. So, what's she gonna do about that? Um, so I love the visual storytelling of The House That Screamed. I think it has one of my favorite montages of the year. Truly A-plus fantastic. And it also has a great amount to say about, like, women's sexuality, about uh, educating your teenagers about sex, um, and honestly about desire in and of itself. I'm not gonna say it's the tightest of all plots, but honestly it's pretty serviceable and you could sit through worse. Um, but I think it's fantastic, but if you did get shied away due to the plot, I would completely get it. Also, you have it narrated by Elvira's movie Macabre if you watch it on Tubi in the US. So no excuses and check yourself into La Residencia or The House That Screamed and I hope you don't get murdered there. <laughs> and now for the honorable and dishonorable mentions. So for the honorable mentions, we are gonna be talking about Good Manners by Marco Dura y Juliana Rojas. It is another film from Brazil, and it is a fantastic addition to the magical realism genre. It has some fantastic visuals. It features an Afro-Latina in a main role, which I can't say for many of these other films, and is so, so, so important. And overall, if you're not crying at the end of this movie, I don't think you have a heart. It's gonna touch your soul in some way. And for some dishonorable mentions, uh, we've got Blood of the Virgins by Emilio Vieira, um, which is about 50% boobs, 49% uh, shitty vampire makeup, and 1% peak 60s fashion. Uh, do what you will with that. It's entertaining, <laughs> but I'm not going to say it's really great by any stretch of the imaginations. Um, and finally, there's Awaken the Beast by Jose Marica Marins, given a, given a second shout out in this film to Jose Marica Marins, because this movie is freaking crazy. I thought this was the end of the Coffin Joe series. No, no, no. It doesn't have anything to do with that Coffin Joe. It has to do with Coffin Joe as the embodiment of reefer madness. See what I mean and check out this movie? Um, if anyone can explain the Coffin Joe extended universe to me, now would be the time because Awaken the Beast definitely made it a little weirder. <laughs> Anyways, time for our last movie of the series. 
So we are finally rounding up this Latino history, horror history month with Tenemos la Carne or We Are the Flesh by Emiliano Rocha Minter, a director from Mexico. So the best way to describe We Are the Flesh is by uh, going through the trigger warning. So without further ado, <clears throat> let's get into it. Trigger warning for nudity, incest, necrophilia, rape, cannibalism, lots of incest, drugs, violence, orgies, and yet more incest. There's a lot of incest in this film. Uh, but this film is not all about incest. Uh, I swear it's not. Uh, this movie's a lot crazier than that. Um, it's crazy in a really good way, though. Um, I am obsessed with the visuals of this film. Um, I am obsessed with the set design. It is fantastic. Uh, you can definitely tell that this is a movie that was influenced by Gaspar Noé, and it really shows. And I think he's one of the few directors that are really able to, like, grasp that, like, Noé spirit and just run with it. But that being said, Emiliano is definitely his own director. And he creates a non-stop variable throw ride and a great addition to extreme cinema, which I feel kind of, like, teetered out a little bit in, like, the early 2000s. Like, we need to kind of bring that bring that up more um but also i really appreciate emiliano because he is very equal opportunities with the nudity with the grossness with honestly how graphic everything is i really appreciate the fact that he didn't just go and show female actress show the actress just being a object of sexual desire, it's very much about what you can do with literally the flesh and what that necessarily means by we are the flesh. So if you are interested in an excellent addition to extreme cinema and if you are able to get a copy via Arrow, check out We Are the Flesh. And this is my conclusion to my Latino Horror History Month. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'm really sorry if I didn't get your country. Um, I might be doing a part two of this. Maybe I'll do this, like, at a different time in the year. That's not necessarily uh, Latino History Month. That is maybe some other time, because who says there can't be, like, more Latino horror movies all year? <laughs> um, and not just in September, October. But... If you have any suggestions for me for next time around, let me know in the comments section. If you are big fans of any of these movies, please let me know in the comments section. Like, comment, subscribe. And finally, just one favor, just one favor. I don't usually get emotional about stuff, but um, so I have been trying to find a horror movie for El Salvador um, for a while, uh, since before I started this channel. And if you know any, or really any Salvadoran cinema, please let me know. It's, it's been kind of difficult to find, sort of. Um, so let me know in the comments section if there's any Salvadoran cinema that you know out there. It would be nice to cover. Um, anyways, I am Bridget Bardot, for all you know, your girl behind the counter. And I am signing off. So see you later, counter crew.